Three days after the tragic passing of Matisse Kavlenix, the Blue Jackets president of hockey operations and the GM addressed the media. It was visibly hard for them to be there and answer questions. Eric Francis isn't exactly the kind of reporter you want to hear asking questions, and you'll see why in a second. A couple quick ones. Uh, just uh, what you were talking about earlier, having people available, I, I would assume that's also for players. Mm -hmm. Without getting into any names, have you guys heard from players that may be interested in that? Oh, that's that's personal, Edge. Um, even when we have players talk to uh, professionals during the season, that's their business. I don't even know about it. So we supply all the help that we possibly can, and it's an option for the players, their families, people that work for the Blue Jackets. I mean, this I've seen a lot of down faces around here. Uh, hey, this, this kid was available. He made uh, people smile. He's just a great kid. So it's we'll do what we can to, to help anybody that needs it. Questions about Elias last night, and you gave a pretty direct answer. And in a market like this one, that's sort of taken as the coach blasted, you know, one of his star players. Uh, I assume whatever you say to us in the media, you would say to the players, and like, I mean, where's the level of communication in that regard in terms of criticizing? Players? Well, I didn't think he skated last night, so if the article I blasted him. I mean, that's you guys. I mean, but what do you want him to say? I mean, you guys are taking it to a. If Hoggy has a bad game, a couple of bad games, I, I say it, but it's not in the paper. Like. He's a big man. You know, he had a tough night skating-wise, I thought. It's over with. You know, he played 21 minutes. He's not on the end of the bench, so we're, we're taking this to a different level. Like, yeah, it's different. I, I was on your side as a media guy, right? And I get it. But you guys got to analyze the game, too. You got to understand certain things, too. So it's not talk that has a problem with Pedersen. It's you asked me a question, who was good, who was bad. So I got to be careful because if... If you guys are going to ask me questions now, a player, I'm not going to say, I'm going to say no comment. I'll let you guys analyze it. So you guys got to be careful. That's not a big deal. He's out there smiling. It's not a big deal. So maybe it's a story that we're, we're winning a lot and we're looking for negativity. That's the way I look at it. Not to blast you guys. It's just frustrating because it's, it's you know, over the net, internet talking blast at, at Pedersen. So I don't know how I blasted him. I just said he had a tough night. Do you and think there's a fatigue factor? I mean, we go back our, to the road trip, he was lighting it up. I mean, I just wonder as you Some guys go through there. stretches. Yeah. Whether you're a good player or not, and sometimes you got to be reminded, hey, you got to skate, you got to manage the puck. You know, you got to get some good angles. It's, I don't care who you are. Nikita, I think your stock rose significantly in the playoffs. Just, I mean, you did everything for this team, uh, which maybe prices you out of being re signed here. How, you, you talked about how much you loved it. Um, how badly would you like to come back to Vancouver? Why do you think I pressed my, myself out of here? Well, he, maybe your, your contract may have gone How up a little bit. How much do you think I should be making? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you guys, I don't know where you get those numbers from the trees. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you you got to stop listening to Edmonton reporters who is reporting the contract negotiating. It's, it's only between my agent and Patrick. And obviously, I'll love here. Hopefully, we can work something out. We did. I saw you talking to the referee after the this loud goal. Did you guys see anything you could challenge for? Was no. It one of those? No. I'm not win the challenge there. What in your evaluation was the reason for the loss? For the. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that alone. Are you happy with the effort tonight? Yeah. Yes. You're asking me dumb questions, guys. Really dumb questions, Jesus. At all. And the play just gets finished more than anything else. And that's in the situation book and it's in the real book. So the only way that I was particularly concerned is, is like some of your foreheads right now. Because the people in the media doing that to me, like you cannot believe it. I caught you with the full forehead. That's where it came from. You were. What's that? I, 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 your interpretation is interesting because, I mean, it, 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 according to what Swayman says in their locker room, he was well, for well, let's, let's leave, go with him. We're good. We're in Boston. <laughs> Stay with the Bruins, brother. I'm with you. I'm from Brooklyn, man. I ain't from Boston. <laughs> uh, but, Paul, can uh, so we know. But uh, could you also speak to just Bennett's impact on the series? I mean, you know, obviously emotions were high. He played a heck of a game, kept it composed tonight, and, uh, and yeah, obviously he's I, I become a – there's been lots of energy 
with this, lots of coverage. And I think you've got lost your minds on it, uh, which is fine. You have that, you have that right. But we've been a very disciplined, very composed team. We have. Fortunately, it's been a good way. It's gone unnoticed. We're all right with that. Sound off in this comment section if you think that players owe us the right to know if they're injured and what kind of injury it is. Personally, I think Heronic handled it well. Your season was really two seasons in one. Up until Christmas, incredible production, point production. Um, that obviously dropped off in the second half and in the playoffs as well. Uh, I don't know if you were playing through an injury that you're willing to shed a little bit of light on, but how do you look at sort of the two halves of the season from the production standpoint? I mean, you named it. Like, first half of the year I was producing, second half I was not. And why was that, I guess, is the question. Um, why? If I know the answer, I probably would do something different, right? When I didn't produce, I would try to change something. Were you playing through an injury? No. We gave you your space all year. We're just trying to ask a few questions at this stage. And well, what do you want me to say? I just I was curious about where the production. What do you want went. me? What What do you want me to say on, like, on an injury? If I didn't have injury, what do you want me to say? I said no. End. When's it all going to end? You could just see when it was 3-1. One. one little mistake, just waiting, just waiting when it was 3-1. When's it going to end? I know how Williams feels now. I guess a fellow like Rick Middleton really wanted to play badly against the Rangers. Yeah, well... <laughs> Bob, <laughs> if you'd have won, you'd have been playing the Rangers. Yeah, if my aunt had nuts, she'd be my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Don, you've seen a lot of games in hockey. How would you, how would you rate this one? You know, a seventh game of the Stanley Cup series. I don't know. I, you guys will have to rate it. I'm too disappointed. I don't. I think it was a horse. <laughs> we lose like that. I tell you, but uh, that was a tough one. I'll tell you. Whew. I don't think I'll have a much tougher loss than that in overtime, seventh game, going in the finals, boys. What more can happen? What more can happen? I'm telling you. How about a prediction on the play? It's like asking me what I want, sif or gonorrhea. <laughs> <laughs> what do I care? Nathan, Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Uh, Nate, you know, I know you're a gamer and, uh, and all this. And, uh, you know, I'm just thinking maybe out loud as far as in your shoes right now. It's like, all right, we've done all the thinking we can do. We've done all the game planning we can do. Maybe, maybe, you know, just fuck it. We'll just go in next year and just not think it anymore and just win this thing when we don't think so much. Is that, am I on the right path at all with this? Like maybe just guys think a little too much. No. Oh. Last one here for Nathan. Mark Spector, Sportsnet. What? A lot of people. A lot of people are always going to look at two losses for this team. Is it time to panic? But for you, right? It's, it's fans, I think, get a little bit up to exactly. It's preseason, so. Is this for you, know, you more about development than results? Well, it's about getting prepared for the regular season. It's uh, you know, it's early. It's a second game. We're looking at young guys. We're looking at players. So. Um, you know, that's what it's about. Long shift on Detroit's second goal. I mean, is that the kind of back checking this team needs? Play clearly looked like you stopped and almost quit. Up. <laughs> Do you think that I don't play? think I don't think I'm going to value that question right now. Do you think you back checked on that play the way you need to? I'm not going to value that question right now. I mean, that's a legitimate question, isn't it? It looked like you I'm, stopped. I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to get into it with you right now. Why not? Next question. Cutter Gauthier was selected 5th overall by the Flyers back in 2022. However, he refused to play with the team that drafted him and he was traded to the Ducks. An article was written alleging that Kevin Hayes was part of the reason why Gauthier didn't want to sign with the Flyers. Torts was not happy about this article and he decided to address it mid-interview. Is the, is the guy here, is there, doesn't, the guy here that, that caused Kevin Hayes a problem? You? Are you kidding me? 
Do you think Kevin Hayes is going to do something like that? It's it, it, it just it pisses me off that, that you guys throw that around and affect someone's life. No, Kevin Hayes and I had a problem. Uh, we couldn't come to an agreement on how to play. That's a good man. That's a good man. And, and what you said is going to stay with him. It'll, it'll, that's what you guys don't understand. You say something, and you're going to sit there and say you have the right sources. I call Go ahead. I'm sorry. First, I'm letting the first two by him and then shutting the door the rest of the way. How did you think that, you that, Is that the podcast? Excuse me. Is that that silly podcast you guys do? It is a podcast. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Park Spectre, Sportsnet. So I don't know if you'll greet this question or not, but... Did you know that Austin Matthews had a four-point night? Do you have the game on in the room before? Are you aware of that when you're heading out in the ice for the late Hockey Night Canada game, Connor? Um, you know, we watched a little hockey in the lounge uh, kind of before our meeting and before our warm-up. So, you know, we watch, uh, we watch some games. And, you know, obviously this year we're watching a lot of uh, the North Division. So, you know, we see a little bit of their game. But, uh, no, I mean, I, I don't. And I, 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 I'm not sure why that that would matter. Uh, speaking of not good enough, your top players it didn't produce much of anything in this series. Does it add to the frustration that you guys uh, really didn't uh, hold up your end of the bargain? No, we love that. We love going without a point in, in three days for sure. It's great. Marner being asked about adjusting to the sunlight has to be one of the strangest questions asked in recent times. How was the adjustment back to North America then? A lot easier than going there, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's been some nice days. Obviously, the one day was really crappy here, raining, but, um, you know, it's been nice. I've been sitting outside a lot, getting a lot of sunlight, trying to just get used to the time change and everything like that. And um, it's been a lot easier coming here than it was going there for sure. The lack of sun really did seem to bother you. Like the two hours less over there, right? Like, is the sun important to you? I mean, I guess it's important <laughs> to everybody, really, but like, it's from um, athlete's perspective. Well, I think, I mean, the more sun, I mean, I think anyone would say the more sunlight you get, the probably happier you are. I mean, I think it's a pretty known cause that uh, the darkness sometimes maybe causes depression or something like that. Um, so, you know, it's definitely nice to have sunlight, see it, um, be around it, and, you know, get used to it. Is that a fact? You're a college guy. I don't know. That's true, no? Is that not? I swear, if it's, like, rainy and moody, it's, like, more depressing. The sun's good for you. Yeah, I know, exactly. That's why I'm saying I like the sun. You want to be interviewed? Get over here then. <laughs> what are talking about? Talking about the sun. My <laughs> wife's a science person. You know, I'm not. Ask her. Uh, Senator Wright. Uh, Pete, as much as you're praising the Oilers, did you not think it was kind of a lifeless second period for your team uh, after falling behind and just kind of putting no pressure on them at all? Yeah, I mean, listen, there's, there's always things you can do better. You know, I'm not... You know, you can sit here and question our character if you want. You haven't been around all year. I haven't seen you here all year. So, uh, yeah, well, you are. That's what you're doing. So, you know, I, I'm not going to do it. You know, you go ahead and write whatever the fuck you want. Third row on the right, Eric. Uh, the rest takes care, care, takes care of itself. Mark. My name is Blake. Uh, or sorry, Blake. Yeah. Sorry, Blake. Yeah. Uh, what is the uh, what is the ideal first shift for you in a game? Is it a touch? Is it a hit? Is it a chase? Is it what is it? Ideal? Yeah. Scoring a goal. I mean, that'd be ideal. Yeah. This reporter was not gonna let Keith off easily when he asked why he started the worst defenseman. We weren't at the required level. Tampa played at a higher level than us and got rewarded for it. This team has talked a lot about killer instinct. How do you explain why it wasn't there? Tampa was really good tonight. Why, did you, so why would you start your worst defenseman in a building knowing it was going to be this loud and this crazy? Who's our worst defenseman? Justin Holmes. Sure opinion, I guess. Why did why did you start those five? Were you trying to reward Kent for uh, like kind of breaking the teams? Were you trying to reward them? It was our best line in the last game we played. Did you guys regroup, um, flush this? Uh, we just flushed it. I mean, we're 
came on the road here. We got a split. We came, we came out here. There was five. It was a best of five series with three games in this building and two at home. Now it's a best of three with two in our building. So to su it's a successful road trip in that sense. Whether you lose the game 2-1 or in the manner that we did tonight, it doesn't matter. You wash it. You move on. We'll be better next time. We have said the last two or three days that you know, we're going to find out a lot about this team on this trip. What are you learning about this team thus far on this trip? Hedge, Hedge where do you want me to go with that? I mean, we played awful. Uh, so I'm not going to sit here and, and criticize our group. Do we, we didn't play well. And so I don't know why you asked me the question. Like I said last night, you, you guys can write your stuff. I'm not going to be part of your story. I'm not going to do the team any good by going up and down as far as what went wrong. A ton went wrong. I'll give it, I'll give it to you that. But I'm not going to – so there's no sense to ask me those type of questions. Yeah. This, this team uh, looked so encouraging for four – well, three of the four games against Carolina. And then just to kind of come here and play like this, I mean, I guess just – I and mean, we're all shocked. Are, are, are you shocked? Is, would would that be an accurate way to describe how you feel about this right now? No, I'm just going to start getting ready for Tampa. Okay. Thanks, John. Okay. Next, we'll go to Aaron Portsline. Go ahead, Aaron. Thanks, Ben. John, I, I think there was an expectation that this would be sort of a response game from you guys. Did Was there tentativeness there like you talked about early in the season? Have you – Rather than anger, did it did it appear as that you guys were tentative today early rather than looking to respond to, to Saturday's game? Well, I think I think we played harder today, but we couldn't make a play. Yeah. And and how as a coach who knows what's in some in, inside some of those guys talent wise, how frustrating is it to see these guys who you've seen play better individually as a team, et cetera, just not be able to get it together, just not be able to perform. Is that the most frustrating thing as a coach? Well, yeah, we, we're trying to win hockey games. So you want your guys playing at their best. And um, we didn't make a play. We didn't make a play. It, it, was a, it was a struggle for the past six periods. All right, we'll go to uh, Mark Scheig. Thanks. Thanks, Glenn. Yep, John, um, just the goalie interference call. Is what did you see there, and did you get any sort oh, of – Oh, for God's sakes. That, who cares about that? My God. Just got the shit kicked out of us, and you're talking about a goaltender interference. Come on, Mark. I, I'm not trying to disrespect you. I don't care about that. Well, I asked because it was at a 1-1 game where you know if it failed. It was obviously a big moment in the game for you. Yeah. Just, yeah. um, is that a I point? challenge it. We didn't get the challenge. Thank you, John. Yeah. So you're eight years into your career. You're still only 26, but are you cognizant of, you know, your biological clock and, and, and when you want to, you know, get to that championship ring that you've been looking for a long time? Are you, are you counting the years? Is that something that's a, a concern for you that you want to see this thing happen much sooner than later? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I want to win. Uh, you want everyone wants to win every year. Um, but that being said, I'm 26 years old. I got lots of great years ahead. Uh, I'm not worried about uh, time, if that's what you're asking. Let's end the video off with Sutter being asked dumb questions and him coming back with wacky responses. Daryl, as an Albertan, uh, how unique a situation is it that your fate for the next two, you know, two of the next three nights rests in the hands? Of the Oilers. Because I'm from Alberta. Well, how unique a situation is well, it? Well, I, I guess if I was from Saskatchewan, it would make a difference, but it doesn't really matter to me. The, don't you, the irony of, uh, you know, out, Flames fans now having to cheer for the Oilers, is that, uh, is that lost on you? Well, I think there's lots of people that cheer for Connor McDavid. I do too. You certainly will be over the next couple of nights. Okay, we'll go to Solemn next. Ooh, some of these guys don't want us to win. Hey? Hard to believe. The franchise hasn't played in a game seven Who since cares? 2002. Who cares? Is that so? Should we have a 
major announcement tomorrow that we haven't played in game haven't played in game seven. All right. Good you. No sense bitching, right? Nobody's gonna listen to you. <laughs> good, Perry. Then. Pardon? Yeah, it was awesome. We haven't played a. I found out during the press conference that we haven't played a game seven since 2002. So I can't wait to get back there. Jeez, it's big for me. <laughs> When Johnny and Matthew left, there was some talk out there that people didn't want to play in Calgary or play for the Flames. Do you think that's been put to bed with all these long-term signings? Well, you can answer that, Derek, can't you? Do you like, you know, there's guys here who aren't from Calgary, but I've said a lot, so if I had a choice of cities that I was in, I would only go back to the four I was, and this was one of them. So if I live in a city in Canada, that's where I'd live. Quite simple, very clear. I mean, what more do you want? Don't like it, leave. 